Hello everyone, happy Sunday. This is Simon with Abotrade. Uh, welcome to our weekly webinar, mapping out our week ahead. And in simple words, what we're trying to do here is actually create the plan for the day. I prepared a lot of interesting information. Uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, the results on uh, NFPs and how it affected the market. We'll talk about uh, the biggest uh, gainers and some losers. Uh, we'll talk about individual stocks, uh, specific uh, forex pairs, indices, and uh, we'll take a look at Bitcoin for dessert. A few things about myself. My name is Simon Friedman. I'm a senior account manager with Ava Trade. I've been involved with trading for the past 24 years. I started as a prop trader in June of 2000, New York City. And after doing that for 11 years, I moved into a different way of trading and also started to mentor and educate other traders. And I'm very happy that I have an opportunity to assist our traders with our trade. Uh, agenda, as we said, we'll talk about indices, stocks, commodities, forex. Uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit about fundamentals. We'll mix it with technicals. We'll take a look at economic calendar, which is very important. Uh, risk warning, you can find a full statement at avatrade.com website. Everything we do here is purely educational. Of course, we do not recommend any trades. Uh, social media channels, I uh, highly recommend for you to follow us. Uh, you have uh, Telegram, you have X, which used to be Twitter. And as I always say, my favorite is YouTube channel. You have a great selection of material there. You have tutorials, you have uh, educational material. You have webinars, including this one, that are being posted on YouTube. Please subscribe, click on the bell, be notified. Also, if you are watching this on YouTube, please click like so we can create uh, more opportunities for others to watch. I think that's how the algorithm works there. And uh, if you are watching it and if you like it, please click on that like. Also, subscribe if you haven't yet. And also write your feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them. Okay, uh, let's start. So this is a beautiful bull right here, as you know, of Wall Street, kind of symbol of Wall Street. Uh, but it's not about the picture. So this article you can find on uh, marketwatch.com. It says right here, Dow logs record high. Uh, stocks rise, treasuries yield jump after strong jobs data. So we did have a strong job data, as you know, uh, that added, I think, 256,000 jobs. It's the biggest uh, biggest amount of jobs added, I think, since March. So, and also it's the first uh, report, NFP report, since uh, the cut that we had uh, in September. So market reacted in a positive way. We'll take a look uh, through most of the instruments and see how they reacted to it. And uh, uh, the individual stocks went up, indices went up. I think Dow Jones managed to make all-time high, not the futures, but the index, the cash index itself. So big moves on the market. Now, uh, as you see, it says here, the treasuries, uh, the yields went up. And right here, I just brought the chart. Sometimes I show it to you. This is the chart of 10-year yields. As you could see here, the three consecutive sessions to the upside. Friday was the strongest move in the in this past week. And we are. Uh, it looks like we're trying to approach four. We closed at 396 after being around 3.7 in the beginning of the week. So uh, technically, as we speak here, uh, this uh, move, uh, normally it's in favor to US dollar and uh, not so much to gold. So we'll definitely take a look at both of the instruments later on. And of course, we know the dollar did move higher. So this is the yields of 10-year uh, bonds. Now, this is more of entertainment information, I think, but still important to know from the uh, equity aspect, uh, Facebook or Meta, uh, finally, as, as they say, that the gamble of Zuckerberg is playing. I just want to read to you uh, part of this article here. So basically, Zuckerberg just bypassed uh, Jeff Bezos. So he's number two uh, in uh, wealth uh, 
amount of wealth, I guess, the correct uh, terminology here. And uh, he's uh, behind a mask by 50 billion dollars so i'm just gonna read it here uh mark zuckerberg uh, has o overtaken jo uh, jeff Be uh, jeff bezos in terms of wealth it is another sign of how the chief executive of meta platform has won over the market to his vision of investing in artificial intelligence Z and i'm continuing zuckerberg's wealth stands at around 206 billion according to the bloomberg billionaires index that puts him just ahead of amazon.com founder Joe, uh, Jeff Bezos and almost 50 billion behind Tesla CEO Elon or uh, Elon Musk Zuckerberg's wealth has risen by uh, around 78 billion this year so far the most of anyone in the list of the world's 500 richest people tracked by the index like most of the people on the list the changes in Zuckerberg's wealth are largely driven by his stock ownership, he owns about 13% of Meta, which has notched a series of record highs in recent weeks as the market becomes more enthusiastic about the AI and hardware plants. End of quote. Okay, not bad uh, for Mr. Zuckerberg. So he's number two, uh, Mask is number one, and Bezos is number three, looks like it. Wow, interesting. Just my own observation. If you combine uh, the money of these three people and put it into improving the world, uh, we would probably live in a better place. But that's just my wishful thinking. Okay, uh, here comes Tesla, right? Uh, first of all, before we go into reading this, uh, October 10th is the robot taxi presentation. Everybody's looking forward to it. And they even uh, kind of neglected the idea that Cybertruck uh, is being recalled again uh, across the board. By the way, I, uh, I was uh, in New York uh, two weeks ago, as you know, I mentioned the last webinar. I did say, I didn't say, I did say uh, wow, what's happening with me today? I did see a couple of them actually, uh, I think one in Brooklyn and one somewhere in New Jersey on the road. Uh, they look pretty good, look like, a, uh, a, a moving mirror, uh, a huge machine, uh, just uh, interesting. So here comes Tesla, right? Uh, ahead of the uh, October 10th, which is 10 10. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. They'll be revealing uh, details about robot taxi and the uh, AI technology that's improving the self driving and so on. So it says right here, Tesla stock rose Friday, brushing off another cyber, cyber track recall and rebounding from post-delivery hangover. Shares of the electric vehicle maker added 3.9 to close at 250.08, while the S&Ps and Dow Jones Industrial Average were up 0.9.8 respectively. The stock has been on a three-day losing streak following the company's third quarter delivery report. Tesla, uh, delivered about 463,000 vehicles up 6% a year over year and right in line of the Wall Street's expectations. Shares have fallen partly because the stock rose uh, as investors became more confident that Tesla had returned to growth in the quarter. In the first half of 2024, Tesla delivered about 831,000 cars, down 7% percent year over year. Tesla stocks rose more than 20% in the month leading to delivery report Wednesday. Coming into Friday session, shares remain up about, about 80% from that starting point. Okay, so uh, we are waiting for that October 10 uh, robo taxi details. Uh, next, all right, before we go into it, just want to explain what this is for especially for new people this is the economic calendar it's public information you can find it on our web trader or the app uh, also you can just google uh, economic calendar uh, it's all public information it comes from the same source you can know about these things ahead of time which is very important and that brings me to the point of understanding how important it is to be prepared uh, if you take nfps or any uh, announcements that are crucial like uh, interest rate uh, decisions like cpi numbers like nfps like any other important information by the way here i only take 
the most important ones with the high impact. There's so much more you can uh, you can browse through them. You can filter them out. You can choose whatever is relevant for your trading. So important not to be caught uh, by surprise. So you should know these things if you are planning on being successful and you're trading regularly. Uh, be aware of these things. Some people like to put reminders on the calendar. Uh, as far as trading or avoiding, it's totally up to you. Some people like excitement and they have strategies that actually are uh, being used during the announcements with a high volatility. Others prefer uh, to be more calm and wait for things to settle and then enter the trades. It's all individual. You need to choose your own style. So Monday, we have retail sales from uh, Europe, European Union. Uh, Tuesday, uh, the meetings, uh, minutes from Bank of Australia. Wednesday, we have interest rate decisions from New Zealand dollar. We'll be talking about both Australia and New Zealand dollar later on. And uh, Wednesday, also important number, FOMC minutes. Uh, we'll be hearing about more details about the last decision of the Feds when the first cut uh, came in in a very long time. Thursday, CPI numbers also. This is the first CPI number after the last cut. Uh, we have a uh, monetary policy report from UK. We have CPI numbers on Friday uh, from Germany. Uh, employment data from Canada. Uh, usually they report the same time with the US, which happened last Friday. This time it's a week later. And PPI numbers from US and uh, Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index from uh, uh, US as well. Let me just see something really quick. Here we go. I missed this one, so important. So uh, after, right after the report, they actually they increased the percentage of prop. This is from CMB uh, uh, Feds to uh, based on the traders' uh, uh, opinion and uh, predictions. So, as you could see here, uh, we currently between 475 and 5 percent, and uh, be, these are the numbers. Uh, the probability uh, a month ago was about 48.9% of another cut of quarter percent. Uh, a week ago, it went a little bit lower. And take a look uh, right after the announcements or uh, the uh, NFP numbers, it came to almost 100%. We're currently at 97.4% probability of uh, another rate cut, in this case of 0 0.25, and the next decision meeting on 7th of November, and it's going to be right after the elections, two days after the elections in the U.S., which are happening on the 5th of November. So as you could see, the probability is there, and it's been increased to almost a certain move by defense, 97.4%. Let's see how this week's data will affect uh, that situation uh, with we have CPI numbers, uh, PPI numbers, consumer confidence, and so on. Okay, so uh, that uh, takes us to the charts and we'll start actually with China. China has been on uh, the strongest move up. Take a look. This is the daily chart right here. When the move when they started, uh, the plan of uh, improving things by easing the policies and so on, injecting the funds into the economy. Here we go. And the weekly chart, two consecutive weeks with huge move. If you remember last week, we spoke about it that we came to the level of. July, August of last year, and we would think, okay, we might be the resistance, and it was a little bit of hesitation first, and then we continued higher. So currently, we are higher than June of 2022, and we are at the level uh, of the beginning of 2022, around 
January of 2022. Uh, let's see uh, how we act. These levels, super, super strong move. And as you know, if you are regular here, when I speak about China, I always bring the four markets that are affected by the move China. Usually they're moving together with Chinese index. That's uh, oil, copper, uh, commodities, and also two currencies that are called commodity currencies, which is Australian and New Zealand dollar. We'll take a look at them. And I just remind you that it's uh, also connected to China. So that's Chinese index. Now, Japanese index also went up um, uh, in part uh, because of the move of China, of course, in the US uh, index, indices also went up on Friday and also the weakness of yen helped it as well. So move on Japanese index. Now we're gonna move to US indices and let's take a look. As I said, I think the cash uh, index, the Dow Jones, it made the all-time high. This is the uh, CFDs for the futures Friday. This is the weekly chart, right? Uh, Friday was a move up. We're not at the all-time high, but very close to it on the futures here. So a nice move on Friday on Dow Jones. S&Ps as well, close to those highs. And NASDAQ also reacted positively on Friday. Now, let's see if that mood, the upside mood continues this upcoming week. As we said, it's gonna be a lot of data. It is supporting it or maybe the opposite, pushing it, it to a reverse. So we'll take a look. It's gonna be a very interesting week. Also important to know, we'll talk more about it uh, later on, but earnings season is starting as we finish the quarter. So we'll start having reports on individual companies uh for the uh third quarter of this year so that's nasdaq uh german index uh was weak uh, the first four days and then friday was uh, a move up on it friends the same thing from monday to thursday we moved lower uh to the uh support levels here around uh 40 74.57 and friday we bounced uk is sitting here in this tight channel that we mentioned already between 8180 and 8350. It's been a lot of actions, a uh, few attempts to break below, came right back, few attempts to break above, we came back. So we're back in the channel here. We've been channeling here actually since uh, May uh, 20th, May 23rd. Uh, there was a, a lot of action in this channel where we currently are sitting definitely preparing for the move uh, as you know if you observe uh, the charts a lot uh, if you see a long uh, accumulation within the tight channel uh, it's kind of a spring that's ready and ready to jump so we could see the move higher we could see the move lower we don't really know of course it depends not just on the economy and the situation in the uk it also depends on the global uh, equity markets. So we'll continue watching that. So that concludes the indices. And let's move to individual stocks. Uh, we'll start with uh, Meta. As we said, it's been super, super strong. Uh, all time highs, uh, new uh, wealth level for the CEO, as we mentioned. Uh, there's nothing above it. So there's not really something stopping it uh, definitely at some point uh, there's profit taking that some point sellers will come in we'll continue watching uh, it could be they might take it to the psychological uh, even number 600 uh, we could uh, turn around as well so we'll be watching meta so far uh, the investors loving it the traders loving it so we are moving higher on uh, a meta. Uh, Tesla, as we said, we're approaching uh, the, the October 10th presentation of Robot Taxi. Uh, we had two attempts to break to 65. Uh, we had it uh, the second week, first, second week of July. We just had another attempt on the 30th of September. We are failing so far to break the 265. 
and will continue indefinitely. We want to see uh, the results and reactions to that uh, details in the robot taxi and the uh, projections uh, on the profits and technology and other things from the company. So that's in Tesla. Microsoft, on the other hand, is not doing so great as you could see here with trading uh, and this channel here. We so far we still uh, could be in the uptrend, but it's been showing a lot of weakness here. We still uh, from this uh, bottom point of uh, August 5th, this is the daily chart. We are showing higher highs and uh, higher lows so far. So we are trying to climb higher. But as you could see here, first of all, uh, important to notice on the strong move in the market on Friday, Microsoft actually uh, ended up in red and we're sitting right on this 200 moving average here. So it shows the weakness, it shows the diversions to the general market, and it's not a positive sign. So we have this uh, trend line here. We'll see how, we, how we're being uh, affected here if we do touch it or try to break below. So that's Microsoft weaker against other technology stocks. Now, uh, uh, we'll talk about oil in a moment, but we're going to jump a little bit ahead and see how on this move on the oil, we have Axon Mobil, I think, uh, hitting the all-time highs. If you remember, we spoke a few times about these two, two stocks and I compared them that Axon is much stronger than Chevron. Chevron is way behind and also Chevron reacted in a positive way, not as much as Axon Mobil. So Axon Mobil, super strong, all-time highs on the oil going higher. And uh, as I said, we're gonna take a look at the oil in a minute. Okay, um, earnings season Friday, we have JP Morgan and Wells Fargo reporting. Let's just take a look at these two guys. Here goes JP Morgan. Friday was update on the whole uh, banking sector. Here we are uh, below the highs. We hit the high at the, the end of August. Wells Fargo uh, as well. Friday moving higher. And let's see how the earnings uh, affects these individual stocks, the banking sector, and uh, the equity markets in general. So as I said, we are starting that earnings season. Uh, we starting the reports for the third quarter this upcoming week. Uh, also important to manage uh, to uh, mention, I said a few times about these two instruments. One is the UVXY. These are the ETFs. This one is uh, the ProShare VIX, uh, as you could see here. Uh, that was the August 5th. You remember, there was super huge volatility. And this ETF moved from a low 20s all the way to 65. And uh, that was a strong move here. So it start, started to build up here. And it did try to run on Thursday. Uh, Friday, on the market running up, it went lower again. We're sitting on the 50-day moving average here. We're forming this triangle here. So definitely worth watching. Again, we do not suggest any trades, just pointing out some moves on the market, you're choosing your own trades. UVXY, worth watching here. Uh, also, SQQQs, this is the reversal of uh, QQQs, this is the ETFs of uh, ProShares Ultra Short QQQs. So when NASDAQ is going hi uh, higher, this instrument is selling, as you can see here on Friday. When NASDAQ is selling, this instrument is moving higher as we saw here on the 5th of August as well. So another instrument to watch on your list. Okay, that uh, completes the equity markets. We move into commodities. And let's start with oil as we already spoke about it. So uh, go back to MT4. Here we go, crude oil, right? Big move in the week. Uh, I think it's uh, about 9% move uh, for the week. Super strong. Of course, as we mentioned a few times, 
you have demand you have and you have a supply so demand it looks like china is reviving there strongly let's see if that's sustainable so that that also gives more hope uh, on the demand side and of course the situation in the middle east is not getting any cooler it's still super hot a lot of issues there a lot of threats uh possibility of retaliation of israel after the a huge wrecked attack of iran uh and things are heating up so you could see here uh the stock uh, or the oil is moving higher uh we did hit on friday uh, 75 and a half 75 54 and we closed below 75 so we'll continue watching definitely there there are a lot of analysts you can google it that kind of predicting what happened if uh uh, if Iran loses uh, its ability to to sell oil and so on, how it's going to affect the global uh, oil prices and so on. So you can Google and you can look into. It. I don't want to bore you with the numbers, but the fact is the fact. You have a uh, uh, supply uh, threat here from the Middle East, and you have demand as the markets, the global markets are going higher, and the China is uh, moving higher, very very strongly. The Chinese index, so. That's crude oil. And if we already uh, talk about China, let's just uh, look at those four instruments. You have copper, uh, a little bit weird. I think copper already made the moving. We, we kind of stuck here. We couldn't break the resistance of of July around uh, 469, 470. We did have a big move here on the 29th of September, but we closed that day below. So. We'll continue watching copper. You might uh, start catching up with that robust move on Chinese index. And uh, you know what? We'll leave the currencies for, for later when we get to Forex. So uh, that's copper. Gold, as we said, uh, usually is affected in a negative way by that 10-year uh, yields. But I think uh, the war situation and geopolitics is keeping the, uh, the gold strong. Uh, which gives us uh, an opinion or, or an idea that we might see a further move to the upside. The gold, uh, you could see the tails up and down, way, but we are really strongly holding a, above 2,600 uh, after making the all-time high here uh, on uh, 2,685. So we'll continue watching gold. Um, natural gas, uh, after the recent moves to the upside, is sold on Friday after rejecting the uh, $3 point here. Uh, we did have a nice move to the upside, and then the moment we hit three, which is sold on Friday, we went down. But Coco had a huge move to the downside this past week. You can see in the weekly chart, a huge sell-off. We gave away the three weeks of the uh, move to the upside. It lost more than 14% uh, for the week. Uh, also, coffee had a sell-off after this uh, intense move to the upside. Uh, the whole week we've been going lower here. Uh, coffee lost about 5% uh, of its volume this past week. So we'll take a look at Coke and coffee, see if they will uh, able to bounce or this move will continue to the downside. Okay. Uh, brings us to Forex, you know, let's start with the Aussie and New Zealand dollar. As we said, with China, uh, this should be moving higher, but guess what? Uh, dollar index has been super, super strong. As you could see here, with the whole week, every single day of the week, we moved higher. On the weekly chart, you could see it nicely. We just erased the four weeks of losing, and we are right here trying to come back above this trend line here we are above the 200 moving average that's the, what the, move, the whole move started and we are below the 50 and 100 so again if it wasn't for the strength of a dollar we could speculate of course but uh, i think the aussie and new zealand dollar would be super strong and it's worth watching the, uh, this upcoming week take a look we're sitting on the very, very special level here. We had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a resistance around this level, around 0.68. We had a sell-off here uh, on uh, uh, in July. We had a lot of attempts to break above it uh, end of August. 
And then final, we broke, went all the way to 0.6940 area. We came right back on the strength of the US dollar. Let's see if this level holds. If not, we might see a continuation to the downside. So as you could see the current level around 0.68 is a key level for Australian dollar. Similar situation, New Zealand dollar, we are approaching a level of support. In this case, we had two supports here. We had a nice move on, on uh, August 23rd. Then we came, I started this move again on September 12th, moving all the way high here to 0.6360 area. And the whole week we've been selling, we're below the 50 day moving average. We're approaching the key level of around 0.6140 right here. Again, the levels that I mentioned, the approximate levels, right? Important to know. So uh, again, Australia and New Zealand dollar. And, and also we have a, an economic calendar events uh, for these two currencies. Keep that in mind. Um, dollar yen, of course, on the strength of a dollar, uh, we had a huge move on dollar yen. It's up. Uh, about four and a half percent for the week, strong move, erasing the losses for the previous weeks. And as I mentioned, the weaker yen helped uh, the Japanese index, the Nikkei, moving higher as well. So yen shows the weakness across the board, as you can see on the daily chart, uh, Swiss franc, Aussie, Canadian, Euro, Pound, and New Zealand dollar. Uh, all of them are stronger on the yen, uh, against the yen. So we'll continue watching that. Now with uh, the oil move, as you know, if you're trading uh, long enough and if you're observing, uh, on the move on oil, Canadian dollars acting uh, together with the oil a lot as Canada is uh, one of the exporters of, uh, of oil. So take a look what happened here. Uh, Major currencies sold against Canadian dollar. We had a strong move on Canadian dollar. That's not it. Uh, so here, New Zealand dollar. And most of the currencies are down against Canadian dollar. Let's see, uh, USD CAD. USD CAD is still stronger. So uh, the champion for the week as far as currencies was US dollar. A lot of it to do with the move on the yields, treasury yields, as we mentioned in the article there. So we'll be monitoring the US dollar. Again, just want to show you the dollar index. It's been having a blessed, a super strong week. Every single day of the week, we had a nice size candle to the upside. And we are playing with uh, 102 after being uh, below uh, 100 the beginning of the week. So. That's as far as uh, currencies. And uh, as I promised on dessert, uh, Bitcoin, which I uh, had a losing week, Bitcoin uh, lost. Uh, you know, if you don't take into consideration the weekend trading, Bitcoin lost about 5.8% for the week. It is trying to recover. Uh, again, uh, on the strength of a dollar, uh, sometimes Bitcoin goes in the opposite direction. Uh, as you know, the cryptocurrencies, uh, they are competing with uh, US dollar, as we know, it's their purpose. So uh, let's, uh, let's kind of uh, put it all together. First of all, don't forget about the social media channels, especially YouTube. Write your comments, subscribe. We'll be happy to hear from you. Now, put it all together. Uh, we had NFPs, which affected the uh, the equity markets in a positive way. Also, it moved uh, the yields. Uh, the dollar went stronger. Yen sold. Canadian dollar went up on the prices of oil, which were uh, triggered to the upside by both uh, Chinese index moving higher, and unfortunately, situation in the Middle East is not getting any better. The things are heating up. Uh, we have uh, some data this week: the CPI from US, PPI from US, other things that are coming up this week. 
we'll be uh, following it. We'll be following Australian and New Zealand dollar for possible bounce uh, at these levels of support. Um, we'll be uh, watching uh, the big losers for the week on uh, either uh, bounce back or continuation, which is cocoa and coffee that are sold a lot in the past week. And uh, I want to wish everyone a good weekend. We still have time to rest and get energy. I want to wish you a successful week. Uh, be prepared. Manage your risk. Be happy. Be profitable. All the best. We should see each other again next Sunday, God willing. All the best.